So you just modded your Nintendo Switch and now you're wondering what you should do with it. Well, you came to the right place because today I'm going to show you 10 apps you should get right after modding your Nintendo Switch. I spent a lot of money pre-ordering the Switch 2, so I'd really appreciate it if you left a like on this video. It's free and helps me get my money back. But let's get started. At number 10, we have actually understanding everything about the Switch you just modded. So let's quickly get any terminology I might use later on out of the way. Recovery mode. RCM mode or recovery mode is the mode you enter when you put an RCM jig on your right Joy-Con rail and hold down the volume up and power button. In this mode, you can inject a payload. The most common payload and the one you're probably using is called Hakate. Hakate is the name of the bootloader that lets you boot into Atmosphere Custom Firmware, Linux, or Android. Atmosphere Custom Firmware is a modified version of Horizon OS, which is the name of the default Nintendo Switch operating system. If you followed my modding tutorial, go watch it for good luck. In the launch menu in Hakate, you'll see Atmo Emu, Atmo Sys, and Stock. Atmo Emu boots into an Emunand, which is a recreation of your Nintendo Switch's internal storage, but is stored on your SD card and does not connect to Nintendo servers. This means you can't play games online, access your friends list, or do anything that would require communication with Nintendo servers. But this is a good thing, because if you want to do suspicious stuff, <clears throat> like download free games, you won't be banned because Nintendo won't have a way to know what you're doing. Atmo Sys is your Sysdan, which has access to your Nintendo Switch's internal storage, so you can do everything as if you were using a normal Nintendo Switch, but also have access to Atmosphere Custom why. Firmware. Because you can access the Nintendo servers, it's important you don't do anything bannable in your Sysnan, such as downloading non-online safe game mods, downloading applications that show up on your home screen, aka any file that ends in .nsp, or running those discounted games. And Stock Switch is just your normal Nintendo Switch, so how everything was before you modded it. Because all the modding stuff is on your SD card and not the Switch's internal memory, every time you fully turn off your Switch and turn it back on, you will be in your Stock Switch switch and have to do the RCM jig payload process to get back into Hakate. Now how do you access the homebrew menu? Well first off, the homebrew menu is where you can launch homebrew applications. All switch homebrew applications either end in .nro or .nsp. .nro means it will show up in the homebrew launcher and .nsp means it will show up on your home screen. Remember to only download and run NSPs in your emunet. In Atmosphere, you access the homebrew menu by opening the album. Doing it this way will launch the homebrew menu in applet mode, but not all apps work in applet mode. So to open it outside of applet mode, hold down R while running a game until you see the homebrew menu appear. And now that you understand mostly everything, let's talk about what you came for. The main reason I modded my Switch was to get custom themes, and a custom theme lets you and others know that, yeah, I got a yeah, modded why? Switch. To get custom themes, you need the NX Themes Installer app. You can install this by opening the Homebrew App Store and searching for it, or going to its GitHub, downloading the NRO, and dragging it to the Switch folder on your SD card. Whenever you drag files to your SD card, you can do so by turning off your Switch and plugging your SD card into your computer, or in Hakate by going to Tools, USB Tools, SD Card, and then plugging your Switch into your computer. Make sure to always safely eject when you're done if you're doing it that way. But now, here's how to install custom themes. So in NX Themes Installer on your Switch, and make sure you run this outside of applet mode, there's a way you can download themes directly to your SD card by dragging them there. And there's also an app where you can view all the themes you want, and you can download themes doing that. But the way I'm going to show you is the way I've always been doing it. So for this way, you'll need your computer, and you're going to go to themeser.net. And this is the website that has all the different Switch themes that you can look at and download and you're able to get a theme for just your lock screen, just the home menu, just the all games menu, or just your friends menu. But if you want a theme that includes all of those together, you'll want to look at the themes pack option, and that's what we're going to download. So once you find the theme that you want, you want to look at this thing right here. So NX themes installer that has the little code beneath it. Every time you get a theme, you want to remember this code right here on the website, and then back on your switch, go to where it says download themes. Here we're going to click input text, and that's where you type in what you saw on the website. So for for me, it was P10F. All right, and then click OK, and then search. I did not mean to get this error, but it's actually good that I did. If you get this error, that means you don't have your internet turned off. And if you want to download the theme, you need to be on the internet. So I'm going to turn off airplane mode, wait for the Wi-Fi icon to appear, and then I'll go back in. So now if I click search, I'll be able to download it this time. So it's loading and it's going to download all of these. It's going to show me everything that I want. Say I didn't want the lock screen. I could just uncheck it and then click download, but I'm going to get all of these. So I'm going to make sure they're all checked and then click download all. And then they're downloaded to my SD card. So I can click okay. So now 
that they're downloaded, I need to put them on my Switch. So to do that, I'm going to go to themes and we'll see everything that I have here. If you don't see a theme that you downloaded, it might be located somewhere else. So you can just click B and then B again until you see downloads and then you can click into that and then it might be somewhere else. As you can see, I have other themes here that weren't showing up, but I downloaded the Pixel Cyberpunk. So I'm going to open this folder and then just install all of these. I can click Y to multi-select and then click every single thing that I want and get it highlighted in red and then click plus to install all of them. All right. And now they're all installed. So now I can click reboot, reboot again, and then it's going to put me into Hakate. And once I'm in Hakate, I can relaunch my Emunand and I should have the theme on. So there we go. I have the lock screen. I have the home menu. Let's check out the friends menu. Got that too. And then let's check out the settings menu. And I got that too. So this theme looks really bad with dark mode on because of the text, but it still looks pretty cool. And that's how you get custom themes on your switch. At number eight, we have Mission Control. This is an app that lets you use third-party Bluetooth controllers on your Switch, which is how I played Mario Kart 8 Deluxe with a PS5 controller in one of my other videos. To get this, search Mission Control in the Homebrew App Store, install it, then restart your Switch to go back to Hakate and relaunch your Emunand or Sysnam. The pairing process works how you would pair a normal Switch controller, but you instead press the pairing button on the controller you're connecting. Mission Control doesn't support Xbox Series S or X controllers, but that brings us to number seven. Syscon lets you connect wired third-party controllers to your Switch. The installation process is the same as Mission Control, but search for Syscon in the App Store instead. After you have it, plug your controller into your Switch dock and you'll be able to use it. This is the emulator I used in my Switch emulation series, and it's such a nice app to have. RetroArch has support for almost every Nintendo console and portable up to the DS, and most of them run very well. Heavy on the most of them. I'm not moving, am I? To get RetroArch, go to this website, linked in the description, download the Nintendo Switch version, extract the folder, and drag everything inside of it to your SD card. RetroArch doesn't work in applet mode, so you have to open it outside of applet mode. Do you remember how to do that? Because I'm not going to tell you how to. I'm kidding. You hold down R while opening a game if you forgot how to. Load Core has a list of all the currently installed cores, which are different emulators you can use. I usually drag my ROMs into the downloads folder, which is in RetroArch downloads on your SD card. And once you get some ROMs, you can choose it in load game, choose a core, and then play it. This app should already be on your Switch, but it's good to know what it does. Daybreak is used to upgrade or downgrade the firmware version of your Switch. This is important because your Emunand can't connect to Nintendo servers to download updates the normal way. To use Daybreak, go to this site, download the firmware version you want, extract the zip, and drag the folder to the root of your SD card. On your Switch, open the homebrew menu, then launch Daybreak, and in Daybreak, press install, select the firmware folder you put on your SD card, press continue, preserve settings, select install FAT32 plus X, Fat, press continue, wait for it to finish, and select reboot. Make sure you only do this if you're updating your firmware, because who knows what will happen if you go from firmware 19.0 to firmware 3.2. Let's not find out. And I should also mention that whenever a new Nintendo Switch update comes out, make sure you only update once Atmosphere releases support for it. I'm saying this for anyone who updated to firmware oh, no. 20.0, but now you know. Do you wish your home menu had music? Well, now it can. Sistune is an app that lets you play music on your home screen and in game. To get this, download Sistune from the Homebrew App Store and download NX Overlay Loader and Tesla Overlay Menu from their GitHubs. Extract these two zip files and drag the folders inside of them to the root of your SD card. While you're here, also create a folder to store the songs you want to play. The supported formats are MP3, FLAC, and WAVE. Back on your Switch, hold down L, down on D-pad, and press the right circle to open the Tesla Overlay Menu. Here you can go to Sistune. So inside Sistune, all you have to do is go to Music Browser and then locate the folder wherever you put all your songs inside. I put it inside a folder named Songs. And then all you have to do is press X to add all of the songs. And then it'll say added four songs to playlist. So if we click B, B again, and then go into playlist, we'll see all the songs here. So now we have all the songs added. And if I click B again, and then click play, we should hear the song. There we go, it is playing. And you can use right to skip to the next song or left to skip to the other song. All right, guys, I'm gonna cover this next song and you have to tell me in the comments what the name of it is. I wanna see how many of you know. Do you guys know what game this is from? Only a certain amount of you are going to know. But anyway, now that you have Sistune, let's move on to the next thing. Now I'm not allowed to show you how to get mods for games or oh, Nintendo no. will take this video down, but what I will say is you should definitely look up different mods for games you play. In Mario Kart 8 Deluxe for example, mods let you play as different characters and play custom tracks. But let's move on to number 2. 
I turned my Wii U into a Switch. I turned my 3DS into a Switch. I ran a Switch emulator on my Switch. All those videos I did were possible because of Moonlight. This is an app that lets you stream your computer to your Switch and use the Switch controls to control your computer. If you followed my modding guide, you already have it in the homebrew menu, but if you don't, just get it from the homebrew app store. I have a bunch of Moonlight tutorials on my channel, so I'll just put one in the top right, but I love this homebrew app. And now it's time for the final app that you need on your Nintendo Switch. Chicksit. That's how you say it. But JKSV is a save manager for your Switch that lets you load games from save points you create or ones you get from the internet. I mainly use JKSV to load 100% completion saves, but I don't feel like doing a voiceover for this. So let me just show you how to set it up. So if you want to know how to use JKSV to load a 100% save file, you first have to find a 100% save file on your computer. And you're like, oh, why am I saying it like that? It's actually pretty hard to find one that's free, but I'm going to be doing this for Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. So I found a save dump here. So what I have to do is go down to the download, manual download, and then download again and get that zip file. And then I'm going to extract this zip file. So extract all, extract. And there we go. We have the 100% save file. So now in JKSV opened outside of applet mode, you want to go down to whatever game you're doing this for. So I'm doing Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. Click new backup. And then let's just name it Tidal 100. And then accept. And after that creates, we're going to have something called Tidal 100 on our SD card. So I can click close out of this. So now you want to restart your switch and go into Hakate so that we can plug it into our computer. So I'm going to hold down our options, restart, go into Hakate, and then I'm going to do the SD UMS thing that I mentioned earlier. So we're going to go to tools, USB tools, SD card, and then plug our switch into our computer. So now with your switch plugged into your computer, locate the JKSV folder and go to Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. And you'll see that we have the Tidal100.zip save file. So inside here, if we open it, it's just all of the saves. So now all I do is open the 100% save file that I downloaded, select everything inside of it, make sure if it's in a zip file you extract it, and then we're just going to right click, compress to, and then zip file, and you'll never guess what we're going to name this. We're going to name it Tidal100.zip. So now that we have that save file, go back to your switch, and the one that you created with the exact same name, we're just going to delete it, and then replace it with the new one. So there we go, now we have the 100% save file. So now you can safely eject your SD card, and then back on your switch, just click close, and then we're going to go back into our Emunan so that we can open JKSV and then go back to the game that you created the backup for. So for me, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, and you'll see that we have the Tidal100.zip save that we created. So we're going to hover over it and then click Y to restore. It's going to say, are you sure you want to? And then hold down yes until it's finished. There you go. And now it's going to load everything from the 100% save onto our game. And now that that's done, you can close out of that and edit this all by myself. I hope this video helped you understand your modded Nintendo Switch and taught you about some cool homebrew apps. If it did, please make sure to leave a like and subscribe for more modding content. Bye!